tell folks, I said, use your own practical experience. If you had Jabrella air rat in a given year, then it means two things. Conditions were right and your hybrid is susceptible. So if you use your own practical experience, I know you hate to make those decisions after the fact, but if you had a hybrid that suffered last year, then you know it's susceptible. And again, we played around with uh, hybrids from the corn performance trial, and we found that at least 60% I would classify as susceptible. We've got about 40% of the materials in the corn performance trial can be considered moderately susceptible or moderately resistant. And by that, I mean, not, it's not gonna be zero, zero um, Gibrella ARAT. It's not gonna be zero vomitoxin, but it's gonna be less vomitoxin and less ARAT than the more susceptible hybrid. So you can find, you can get your hands on, on um, more resistant materials, but unfortunately you don't see that very often in seed company catalogs. Uh, corn that was harvested early had less vomitoxin, stored properly and dried, you know, certainly had less vomitoxin issues. And, um, you know, generally the fungicide applications um, that were timed well uh, and positioned well also seem to reduce that vomitoxin level. about the operation here is we, we are spread out. We've got everything from 99, you know, sometimes 95 day corn, um, which should be tasseling, in that case, should be tasseling, you know, around July 1, depending on the plant date. And then on the production side, you know, we've got 112, 113 day corn. So there is a wide window there, which helps with applications when we want to control that. Um, and it, it does depend on planting date. So those late April planting dates all the way through mid-May, you really can spread it out. And the challenge that we have now today is with the ability to plant everything in a couple of days, if we, if we need to, or have a window where we can plant, uh, that does get compressed. So one advantage or one uh, risk uh, management strategy would be to really stretch those maturities out or planting dates. And um, that does seem to help. Um, I haven't seen it be as consistent as just good timely harvesting, right? The longer um, that corn is out in the field, once it's mature, it gets exposed to more weather. Um, you know, how soon did the ears turn down um, versus, you know, ears pointed upright that are getting rainfall on them. Um, so little difference, but not as much as some of the other factors. Man, so this, this sprayer is our track sprayer. It's got uh, plenty of clearance so that we can get under our, get, get it, everything over top of the corn canopy. We, um, you know, we'll, we'll do some fungicide applications. We like the control that we have with that so that we can, we can wait as long as we can and get those ideal, get that ideal growth stage. Um, and we don't have to necessarily rely on a helicopter or airplane. So with that, this machine now has, uh, with 15 inch nozzle spacing, we're able to do quite a bit of, um, you know, 30 inch in season application with it. Um, you can see here, we've got a drop nozzle on the first one, and it actually is a 24 inch drop nozzle with uh, a 16 inch on the bottom of it. The next one over is just gonna be a 24. And then the next one again will be a 24 plus another 16 attached to it. And in between those, we're still gonna use the one that's uh, above the row, which is right on the boom. So we're gonna do a quick spray on this one with water. These are a twin tip. And uh, these are set up for 20 gallon uh, per acre of the product. And uh, we, we've done a lot of work with 15 and 20 both. Don't see a whole lot of difference. Um, you know, where we can, we, we try to stick with that, that 20. And uh, it really does put a pretty good flood down, flood down through the canopy. Um, just trying to make sure we cover everything from the top, at least down to that ear leaf, maybe even the leaf below the ear leaf. So I'll give him the okay and we'll do a quick spray. You can see a little bit of that. We're really just suiting that stuff down there.
we'll step back, have him raise the boom, and then we'll uh, we'll get just a little bit of another perspective. So it really is an, an, just a nice uh, kind of a varied application of um, the product, really penetrating it down, and we get really good coverage with that. Field by field decision for us. We are uh, typically gonna look at uh, what was the rotation? Was it corn on corn? Is it a field where we have, uh, you know, the, the morning dew stays on the longest and it's the first field to get the dew in the evening? Um, you know, is it bottom ground? Does it have a lot of wind and, and you know, there's a lot of airflow there? Um, you know, what's the crop condition? And then this, there's an important scouting piece there for us. We'll, uh, we'll have a drone flight that'll come out here and take pictures about once every acre. And uh, we'll be able to do a little bit of prediction there to see if there is current disease pressure. What does that look like? We couple that with our boots on the ground, looking for things like gray leaf spot and northern and um, you know, just try to put together a solid agronomic decision. 22nd um, at 8 a.m. We'll be switching gears and focusing on soil health for a couple of weeks. And our session on the 22nd is going to be about interseeding cover crops. So I, we plan to have registration information for the soil health sessions that'll uh, be inserted here in a couple weeks in the next corn newsletter. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining and hope you all have a wonderful day.